Variable and fixed and variable overhead variances, cost accounting 15. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of Tainless Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page. We are on Facebook, our email address, and our phone number. I wanted to jump over to two spreadsheets that I have on a topic that I think is one of the most difficult in cost accounting, which is fixed and variable overhead. So this one deals with variable overhead. And the first thing I mentioned at the top in italics is some typical cost drivers. And the cost drivers are the activities that are causing the cost to occur. Most typically, you're going to see machine hours, labor hours, or processing time as a driver of those costs. And what I always tell people is if you can set up the chart at the beginning correctly, you, you can go a long, long way toward solving any sort of problem you're going to get. At the far left-hand side, you have actual, actual variable overhead incurred. This is the check we wrote, the check we wrote for variable overhead. Let's just say our variable overhead is repair costs. The more we use our machines, the more repair costs we're going to incur. So the check that we write for repair costs, we'll use that as our example. The check that we write for repair costs, that's our actual variable overhead incurred. Repair costs of machines, for example. So the actual is always on the far left in all of the variance analysis. The actual is always on the far left. Okay. Now there's two components to actual. There's actual hours worked and there's an actual rate that we're paying. The middle is the toughest one because again vari variance analysis has to do with flexible budgeting which means that we come up with standards. And as I say over here on the right, we apply those standards to actual production. We apply the standards to actual production and that's why in the middle here we have actual hours that we worked times some standard overhead rate that I'll get to in a minute. So you'll note a trend. We have actual across the top in the far left in the middle column and we have a predetermined overhead rate in the middle and on the bottom. So we have overlap on the top with actual and we have overlap on the bottom with standard. So the middle column takes our actual hours worked and multiplies it by a standard. On the far right, with all of your variance analysis questions, you have the standards. And in this case, standard hours times some standard variable overhead rate. So actual left, standard on the right, you'll see that with all the problems. So let's look at the problem that the student was given. Geyser Company makes a single product and uses a standard costing system. They recently used 4,000 hours. That sounds like actual hours used to me. So I put actual labor hours here. And also, actual labor hours goes in these two columns. And they are, I put in parentheses that those were given. To produce 2,000 units. We're, we haven't talked about it yet, but we're going to use units produced to do a calculation here. So up here, I put units produced 2,000. Generating actual variable overhead of $400,000. Now that sounds like the check that I wrote. So I put in the far left hand column in the total section that it was given, we wrote a check for $400,000. So we're given 4,000 hours, actual hours worked. We're given 400,000, it's a check we wrote. So now we can just divide $400,000 by 4,000 hours and plug in, plug figure, the rate that we paid per hour of 100. According to their standards, so now we're thinking about standard or budgeting items, each unit is anticipated to take 1.75 hours. I'm going to need that standard hours per unit and I'm going to do something with actual units produced now. The company anticipated making only 2,400 units. So when we came up with our standards, 
we had a standard for units produced. We thought it would take 1.75 hours per unit and we'd only produce 2,400 units. Its budgeted variable overhead costs were $452,000. So if I go back up here, I'm going to use the 462 right here. So when we budgeted, we planned hours per unit standard, units produced standard, total cost standard. Now we're going to do something with those numbers. What we're ultimately asked is what are the spending and the variable, what are the spending and efficiency variances? So you'll see the spending variance compares the two left-hand columns. The efficiency variance compares the two right-hand columns. Spending has to do with the difference between the actual and the standard rate. Efficiency has to do with the difference, more, more about the difference of hours worked. How efficient did you work? How much more or less hours did you use than you planned? <clears throat> this next part, I believe, is the hardest part. We have to come up with standard hours. We were given actual labor hours, but we have to calculate standard hours. So we take our standard units, 1.75 given. I'm sorry, standard hours per unit, 1.75. Units produce 2,000, and we multiply those two together, and we get 4,200 as the standard hours we planned or budgeted. We then take the total cost, the check that we expected to write, and we divide it by the 4,200 hours we just calculated, we come up with a predetermined overhead rate, A divided by B, of $110 an hour. So the 110 gets plugged in these two columns because I just figured out my standard variable overhead rate. One last thing. It's confusing to people <clears throat> that the standard hours is the standard hours per unit times actual units. So how did I get 3,500? Standard hours per unit given times actual units given, A times B, is 3,500. And you may ask, why did we use, why did we use actual units? Because again, this is flexible budgeting for variable overhead at standard hours. In flexible budgeting, we apply standards to actual production, which is why we're multiplying standard hours times actual units. We see the difference between the two numbers on the right is 55,000. Since our standard is on the far right, as we move to the left, we get more toward our actual spending. So in this case, 440,000 is higher than the 365 by 55,000. We spent more than we planned. That is an unfavorable variance. We spent more than we planned. U for unfavorable. The spending variance is the difference between the middle column and the far right. In blue, the check we wrote. So 400,000 is less than 440. It's a negative 40,000, which is favorable. We spent less than we planned. And then you could, if you wanted to, combine these two and say, if I just do a sum, that the total variance was an unfavorable 15,000 if I wanted to look at the variance in total. Usually you're going to be asked for those two variances, spending and efficiency, but if you wanted to throw in the complete variance, we can throw that in too. So what we just did was variable overhead variance. We said it was repair cost for a machine, and we based it on machine hours. That's as far as we're going to get on cost 15A. For more videos that are not on the web, our web page lists videos by topic. I'm just trying to scoot this up a bit. There we go. You can access either the spreadsheet template I used or the videos themselves on our Not on the Web page. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL. You can email me for a complete list of our YouTube videos.
Here's our email address for live tutoring and chat sessions. You can email, you can check the website, you can call us. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.